Tell me what you know about the hood life it's definitely gonna be a go and this was a long overdue john y'all don't even know the relationship that me and bro got for what i'm saying for one it ain't no need for introduction but for one i want to shout you out bro because i remember before we even like really got locked in you was down south philly and shit. fake free kp man you already know man welcome to the south side facts to the south side dvd just running through the streets right and i'm on 21st street shout out to lou porter you know what i'm saying camera out rest in peace small little yeah, man. Love, bro. Love was a real one. But um, I remember, you know, I'm just pulling the camera out, niggas rapping, yada yada. Then you start rapping. I'm like, I'm like, damn, hold on, let me start zooming in a little bit. And you really start fucking it up. I'm like, damn. Good in every hood on any block, like Millie Rocks. I been through that block, bet them I like, oh my gosh, I coach with them so super quick to switch the roster. Straight Philly nigga, check my demeanor and my posture. And I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna definitely make sure I put this joint out. But I kind of fell back from the Welcome to the Southside joint, and that never came out. Thanks. But I want to salute you because you didn't have to. Your mindset for murder started flowing, mm -hmm. and you gave me the first interview. And before you, you said, yeah, bro, remember I was there in South Philly and da 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 <laughs> You ain't never put you said? <laughs> Yeah, no, I used to really be down to pee. This one, like, Lil was alive, and we was down there... Uh, this one, me and Leak Films used to be down there. Leak Films, before he was Leak Films, was just leaked to me. Mm -hmm. And me and Leak used to be down there. Uh, Lou Porter, uh, his brother, I'm saying Leak, like all of us. I used, I'm like a real Southwest nigga, but I used to always be down to pee. Like, I used to have niggas telling me, like, why the fuck you keep going down there? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because cause it's two different, like, Operating system, so but I used to always just go down there because I fuck with niggas that was from down there. Like, yeah. man, everybody can't loved. come down there for real. For real. real everybody shit. don't even be comfortable down there at all. That's a fact. I, but the first time I seen Meek was in South Philly when he was on uh house arrest with the Navy Braids and all that. Like, like, real. Cassidy, you really was in a pit, yeah. yeah when, when Cassidy, I was on Mountain Street, he was, he was right across the street. On the, sitting on the steps, the first time I seen him, Navy Braids all on that. house like, arrest, yeah, on house arrest. I'm like, damn. Niggas like, yo, meet right there. I'm like, oh, shit, that is, bro. Like, we all around there on Mountain Street on, on some other shit, though. But, yeah, that's... No, real shit, bro. So, I, I first want to salute you just for still giving me the interview when you didn't have to. But then really highlighting, like, yo, bro, remember I was out there? You ain't post that up? I just want you to remember that. So, that shit always come to my mind. And since that day... I really became a fan of not only your music, but just you as a person because I feel like the city missing that. You feel me? Sometimes, like, that shit helps everybody when you feel me. It's like one hand wash the other. So, yeah. I just want to salute you for that. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. So, um, take them all the way back now. Um, like, what part of the city you from? How was your childhood? Um, I'm from Southwest Philadelphia. My childhood, I had my mom and my pop. My pop was an OG. He kind of like kept me away from certain shit, kind of kept me out of the loop that I ended up finding out as I got, as I, my fault, that I ended up finding out as I got uh, older. Um, I, 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 knew, I knew Breeze as, as, as the church Breeze, you know what I'm saying? But everybody else knew Breeze as... You know what I mean, a gangster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh my childhood was my childhood was uh like it wasn't perfect, but it wasn't like to the point where I had no guidance and I ain't know like right from wrong. You feel me? So that's like, but I'm 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 really from Southwest. I'm from the low numbers and the high numbers. I claim that I claim fifty fifth in Woodland. I also claim seventieth in Elmwood between Elmwood and Woodland. And Dix Avenue, like so, you like, right there in the yeah, mix and yeah, shit. Like, I, like, like and uh, anybody that know me from Southwest, I always was rapping. That like that was like a major part of my my whole character. Question: I ain't trying to be. I know it might be the Southwest thing. What's your nationality? You know it's heavy. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie though. I'm, as far as I know, I'm black, but my father don't know who his father is, so I never met my grandfather. I, I think that I'm probably like Jamaican or Haitian though, but. Cause of my 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 facial structure, but I don't really know. But uh, as far as we, as far as me and my siblings know, we just black. But we don't know our grandfathers. A, a lot of us like that. A lot of us really don't know yeah. know that. Like my father, like even how he raised me to the where to the point where like we 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 had disagreements to this day. It's cause like 
he's he a great provider and shit like that. He really and he love his kids, but he he ain't he ain't have a dad. So like he wasn't like necessarily the best dad. He wasn't the worst dad at all. He don't know how to show exactly. certain shit. Exactly. Like you, you that's that's verbatim. But like motherfucking my dad don't know his father. So I don't know my grandfather. So I don't know where his side come from. Cause I asked him that shit before, you feel me? No, that's no. deep. So um one more personal question, then we're gonna uh switch to the music. Now you had a father in your life and things like that. I know you had some homies who really didn't have that male structure in their life. Now, can yeah. you, being older now, can you really see the difference in the impact? Yeah, um, I just see the difference in the impact from like the music, really. But then look, on, on some real shit, bro, it'd be, it be crazy because I could see it from like niggas that's really in it that didn't have a dad. And then I see it from niggas who's got their parents and just be choosing to do that. Like it works, it's a big man. difference and it'd be crazy because I was watching I was watching a live the other day with uh B McFly and and, and, and and shout to B McFly. But I know he love his motherfucking kids and he and he can resonate with parents who love their kids and be in their kids lives and took care of their kids since they had them and the kids still go off on their own way, and then people blame the parents, right. and it don't be their fault. At the end of the day, sometimes kids just choose what they choose. Like, it don't be about whether or not you in a life. Sometimes it's just that's what they choose, bro, because at the end of the day, as a, as a parent, you can't control what your fucking kid do because they're their own person. So all you can do is tell them, yo, you drawing, you doing wrong. This the way you need to go. If they choose to go that other way, that's on them. You can't get mad at the parent because every fucking parent out here not telling it, not encouraging their parent, not, not encouraging their child to do wrong. So it's like, how the fuck can you? It's 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 and if you really watch this show and you really pay attention to the shit that's going on and the motherfuckers that's outside for real, for real. And the motherfuckers that's outside with the niggas that's outside for real, for real, you can see the difference. No, that's a no, that's a fact though. That's a fact. It's like, bro, you you ain't got go ahead, bro. You, know, you feel shit, me, bro. man? It's, it's it's that's a real thing. Facts though. Now, when did music first really like enter your life? Um, it really entered my life. Firstly, was from my brother Bub. I remember my first time in hip hop was uh Tupac. How uh how do you want it? I just remember seeing a nigga with the gold chains and all that with all the bitches. And I remember just like, like, damn, that shit like made me want to like be like something similar to that. Then I remember Snoop Dogg in the joint where he was like, I want to be a motherfucking hustler. And I remember repeating that verbatim as a kid to like my, my, old, my, my oldest siblings. And then my next introduction was my cousin Calvin. And even though me and my cousin Calvin, I wouldn't even speak to this day, but I can't say like he ain't influenced me because he the first one that was like, yo, you could rap for real, for real. And like I took that and ran with it. And I used to be going to his crib as a kid doing the karaoke. Sh I don't even know if you remember Audacity as a as a uh, recording program, but Audacity used to have like a, a recording program. And I used to always want to go to his crib because he had this recording program and we could just record and rap the whole in time and, and uh his mom my, my my big cousin dawn she used to come in there snapping like y'all motherfuckers is loud y'all ain't even supposed to be cousin we kids you feel me so <laughs> so like we kids but that shit made me want to rap more and then as i rap more i ended up learning that i was good and then i took that shit to school and from school i ended up battling niggas that was like bigger than me older than me beat kicking the ass though are you feel me? And that just shit, that shit just turned into like a real talk thing. about them headshots. Where was you at? I wasn't nowhere. I was I was looking up to the niggas like that. Like I was looking up to Meek Mills and NHs and Reed Dallas and like Joey Jahad for sure. And 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 and, and feeling like damn, like that shit is hot is, is is tough. Like I was one of the like, I already say this shit. I told this shit to Meek when I met him. I said, bro, I'm one of, I was one of them dirty young boys that was looking at you and really was like, damn, like, this nigga one of them ones. Like, before he signed his deal and all that shit, like, niggas was look. I was looking at Meek like, when I see Reed, I'm, I'm Southwest nigga, though. 
But when he said, when I see Reed, I'm going to buddy him on sight. Because he a pussy. He ain't busting. He like set the on strike. <laughs> Nigga, that shit had everybody going crazy. So I was one of them ones that was So like, how was your homies? Because like, it's like, are oh, Reed, South, Southwest representative, you Southwest? Just, I, it didn't even matter if it was Reed because he from Southwest. And we already knew Reed was going to do what Reed was going to do, which he did. You feel me? With the with the blue P hat and all that, he he, he turned right back up on him. But, like, niggas always, I was putting niggas on me, bro, like, as, as a kid that, that was older than me. Like, niggas that was really in the streets getting money and that was, like, not trying to hear me. Like, nah, I'm not listening to that shit. Like, I was telling niggas, like, nah, this one of them ones. Like, he a one. He one of them ones. As a kid. Bro, I've been like that. I st I'm still like that. That age that you was able to see. Me? Yeah, but what did you see? Like Rawness. Unscathed. Like, and I don't want to shit on nobody by saying this, but we keeping it real, right? Like, it was certain shit that was happening to certain people in the hood that wasn't happening to Meek. That was like certain shit that was happening to niggas in the hood. I couldn't be like... Yeah, they did that shit to Meek, too. Like, I could be like, nah, Meek kind of like, like, ain't nobody do nothing to that nigga. So it just, everything he said just felt realer. Real shit, though. I, well, but, but I would say this, and then I'm going to um, kind of take it back to your high school days, is when everybody else was, no, I don't rap. I'm really a street nigga. I'm really in the streets. Cuz was on some, no, I rap. Like, I really rap. My Fact. niggas in the streets, I smack the shit out you, but I rap. Fact. You feel me? And it's like... I feel like once now everybody tried to pivot and like oh like they try to make it corny to be a rapper, but it's like he embraced that. No, I rap. This is what I do. Yeah. This is my craft for yeah. real. Now I want to take it back to high school. You know, you start getting off the steps a little bit. You start taking the craft a little more serious. How was it for you? Um, I it's it still was just a, a hobby on some real shit. Cause like I I went to prep. I went to prep charter. Charter, you saw football for real. Yeah, <laughs> you feel me? I went to the P like when they was trying to get everybody from every part of the city to go there. And this before the P, this is this is this is before prep was like really when they was bringing pistols in the prep. Like that's and why I ended up in I, down yeah, South yeah, Philly yeah. being down there. Man, why drawn. You so you like you feel now, me? Bro. Like I used to be. We used to. I used to be down there doing shit I wasn't supposed to be doing as a Southwest nigga. Because one thing about y'all, y'all stick together. So it's like, I used to be down there, like, I knew I was in a way, but it was just like, no, that's my nigga. Like, fuck what y'all talking about. So seeing all the other shit and knowing that I was right there, it just was like, I mean, we here. Like, and, 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 and it made me, like I said, like, my first time seeing Meek Mill, nigga, I was on Mountain Street. I was on the snow. You real shit. I was on the snow. That's what they call it, the snow. Like, niggas was walking up, bicycles, pistols on them, all that type of shit. Niggas was walking up, beefing, all type of shit. And I was just down there. But my, I, the niggas I was cool with was really my niggas to this day. Are you feel me? So, seeing it on the rap side, it was, I was just, I mean, I was, I was excited. I was a fan. I wasn't, I wasn't nothing more than a fan. I'm gonna keep it a being. I say, well, for me, I feel like for me and like kind of like the rest of Philly, we started taking you seriously when it was the mindset before murder for series sure. and shit like That's that. Now, okay. now talk about just go back to that space, you know, where was you? How did you come up with the concept? Cause that's what everybody was trying to do a little shit, but your shit yeah. just hit different. Your yeah. shit just. Um, with the mindset before murder, bro, I'm going to keep it a bean. I was doing Move Maker Mondays at uh, a certain point in time, around that time to where it was like I had so much music and I seen that the internet was taking over everything, though. I'm like, it don't even matter how much music I got. I got to get on this motherfucking internet and start bombing on it. Around that time, and I'm going and, and, and to keep it a bean. It was LGP Qua. <laughs> you know I'm reading the thing. It was Gungeon and it was Feast Banger. Fact. Facts, right? So I said, damn, I'm seeing all this, but I'm like, something missing with these niggas. They, it's, it's something missing though. So I just started doing Mood Maker Mondays. At the time, my girl that I was with, I'm just popping it. I'm popping everything. I'm just saying like, 
little fly shit and shit like that. But then one of these, one of the, my Move Maker Mondays, I did like a drone walking past the police station in Southwest on uh, like 60 something in Elmwood. If you're from Southwest, you know what I'm talking about. And we walking past the police station or the fire station and motherfucking, I got a Colin Kaepernick jersey on. And uh, I'm talking like real police brutality shit, like real shit that niggas be going through in the hood. And that shit ended up getting picked up by, it was called like Philly Classics or some shit. Shit out of the time. Philly Classics. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Philly Classics and like a bunch of other pages. Karan Butler ended up following me off of that joint. I still got a relationship with Karan Butler to this day. Based off of that video, everybody followed me off of that. A couple people followed me off of that joint. And I'm just like, damn, this shit, this shit did better than everything else I did prior. So I'm like, um, my girl at the time, she like, why you don't just do like, Every move make a Monday, one joint you pop me your shit, and one joint you talking about like just real shit that motherfuckers could connect to. My next, my next joint after the Colin Kaepernick joint, because I was in the Colin Kaepernick jersey when I did that one. The next joint I'm talking about bitches, and then the very next joint I'm talking that mindset but for murder shit, and then it just went crazy. And it's crazy because I swear to God, on grandma, I still don't remember how I came up with that idea. Like in my mind, like the the literal mindset before murder, I l literally don't know how. I just remember I was in Southwest on 47th and Chester, and I was writing in my head, and I just came up with that idea because I was being consistent. I was doing Move Maker Mondays every Monday, and that Monday I was just like, "What could I come up with?" And that shit just came to me, bro. I swear to God. And when I first did it, I'm like, "Yo, this shit gonna do like 10,000 views." That shit did 19 million across every platform. So what was it like as far as like, now you going viral, you walking outside, they noticing you now, yes. the bitches hugging you a little closer yes. now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Very close. So what was it like just like, all right, now, you feel me now that people know who I am and shit like that? Um, It was weird, cause like when you, like, I don't know, I be on defense mode, like so seeing certain niggas like stare at you and you don't know what type of timing they on, that shit be kind of like, make you a little more standoffish because and when you in philly i feel like that's a philly thing like a nigga look at you know who you is and sometimes they won't even say nothing but more so now i feel like more so now in today's time i'll get a nigga that stare at me he gonna say like yo bro i'm a fan like i get that shit in wawa i get that shit in the gas station i get that shit pretty much everywhere bro i feel like you Atlanta. make yourself approachable and i feel like other artists need to do that because you know just being in philly and that no dicky you know or just in general is yeah. like you have to be approachable and i learned hell that dealing yeah. with you know caucasian people and just different class of people hell yeah that smile shit, you know you walk that shit real bro <laughs> you gotta smile because real. it's like that people might real. see you and they be like oh that no just keep it pushing real, real. but like that's 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 something i had to learn that that moment just like all right and i was tuned in ever since then but every time i be in the mix i see you you popping yeah. up behind the scenes i'm with benny the butcher yeah. you then benny pull you to the side and really rap with you like no nah, bro so just talk about that for real um the benny kind of happened because of dutch from major figures i wouldn't know benny in them if it wasn't for dutch i can't never take that away from him and i'm saying uh that shit happened in like 2019 before Benny and them was even where they at now, we walked into one of their shows. Mind you, West Side Gun, I didn't even know who the gun was at that time. Gun got on like the biggest fucking chains I ever seen from a motherfucker. And we just walked, it was like me, my man Feek, Slim from West Philly, uh, Dutch, but Slim like tall as shit. So we all walked in there on some like, we here now, you feel me? And Dutch knew that though. I don't know if Dutch was trying to make a point or what, but like we walked in a joint, walked past these niggas taking photos, doing little, we walking through they shit, and niggas looking at us like, who the fuck is these niggas? And then that's when Dutch started introducing us. And then I ended up meeting Conway and Benny. I didn't meet Gun till I got to Atlanta, uh, but I met, I met Benny and I met Conway that day, but I, I ended up connecting with Benny more because Benny like the younger nigga out of all of them. You feel me? And that just turned into what it's Facts though. So what was it like just, um, you know, just a couple weeks ago or a month ago, you was on Instagram watching now. It was like you in the mix with these guys. You somebody now. People come up to you taking pictures. What was that transition like for you? Um, it just was fun, I guess. I don't really, 
And no other way to explain it, it was like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I ain't, I couldn't really see the shit when I was doing it. Like, if that makes sense, like, but that's like, that's why I'll be saying shit about Meek a lot. Cause like Meek was the first nigga that made me think like being a rapper could be actually possible and make money and shit like that. Like we done made solid money since those days. But like from going from a motherfucker that nobody, that niggas wouldn't even pull up to for some rap, for some rap to going from niggas wanting a picture with you. It was different, bro. I ain't, and it's still different. Like I swear to God, it's still different to this day. So, my fault. But what's up with Cash and Ove? I know y'all had like a pretty sturdy relationship when y'all was out here. I did like a song and a video together. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it a bean. I ain't even gonna fraud. Like Cash, probably mad at me because I been was supposed to send Cash some shit that I ain't sending him, and it was shit got fucked up and all that. But me and Cash, I I could pull up DMs and all that. But me and Cash still talk. Like I keep a, I keep contact with Cass because Cass one of the ones that was in the industry that really didn't do no fake facade at shit, bro. Like that's one of the niggas that was really like solid on his word. He was solid on what he said. He was solid on the shit he did. Just like a real good dude. And it, that's what make me so much more like, damn, like this shit don't be really feeling like it's for real niggas or like niggas that stand on they word and stand on the shit that they mean because it's like every nigga that I see that's on that, it, I feel like we get the short end of the stick. You feel me? And to see Cass where he at now to where he was when I first met him, bust down two times. Shout out to Ja. Ja, me and Ja still be talking. Me and Ja always showing each other love two times. I mean, that's my fucking guy. But to see Cass where he at now, like that make me sad, bro. I ain't gonna lie because it's like Cass. A good dude if you know cash you know he was a good dude and he, he'd do a lot of shit that he didn't have to do like nigga i remember being in nodo that nigga performing he like where the so philly niggas at whole 103.9 point up to me he like kp come down i start rapping off that shit. like just a bunch of shit. and that shit end up turning into a song which turned into a video which turned into like a real relationship i remember cash telling me stay out the fucking way like legit, like nigga, no, don't do that. Stay out the way. Like it's shit gonna happen when it's supposed to happen. Like I don't get that advice from a lot of these rap niggas, bro. I'm gonna keep it a bean. That's like, mm. no, no effects though. You ain't never gonna lie. And even when he was here in the city, y'all was there. Yeah. Niggas was upstairs. We bad. He tried to get niggas the bad <laughs> shit. Don't ever do no challenge, bro. With no bars, nah. Philly is gonna smash it, bro. <laughs> Anywhere on earth, bro. Hey, you you know, drop bro. that. Shit. Facts though. Now um you, you got an up and coming project coming out. Talk about some No that shit out. Pain into paper. That shit out right now, produced by Grammy Award winning drummer boy. If you don't know drummer boy, he produced Put On with Kanye West. Got Jay-Z on a remix with Jeezy. Uh, but it was Kanye West and, and Jeezy originally. He produced shit with Rick Ross and Drake. He produced shit with uh he produced No Hands with Waka Flocka, uh Wale and Roscoe Dash. He produced probably any fucking He shit. produced KP. Facts, yeah, you know I mean, he produced uh, 42 Doug and Lil Baby. That shit just was on Billboard. The you dig, John? Like, that now, up, I want um, just like a little personal question for me. How do you feel, especially like when these lists come out and then Philly, like Philly's super political. Yeah. It's like a nigga can be the hottest nigga in the world, right? And they going dicky, they going dicky who they feel is most popular or who they got the most affiliation with. I feel like that's corny. I feel like y'all. I, I, I feel like. It's to a point I'm at a certain level where a nigga can't even deny like what we got going on. Like we be going through it with niggas that we actually meet in real life that like be making lists and shit like that. And then we hit on the side, but niggas can't even keep it real with they self because they be low key hating. So it's like it is what it is. I don't even pay niggas no mind no more. It's just like it is what it is, bro. Like if you feel like that, I could already tell what's a hater and what's not. I could tell what's hate and what's love. I could tell who a groupie and who not. I could tell who keating and who not. I could tell who who on agenda type time and who not. Like I could literally tell that, literally. You know what I mean, I'm I, I, I'm I'm 
Bro, I popped out in 2018. I'm, I'm one of the main niggas for, since 2018 that niggas still talking about. You feel me? Real shit. You feel me? Like, I'm, I, was, I was around before Reels. Like, I went viral before Reels. And I'm still going viral. And I'm still going up. Every year, I go like this. As long as I'm going like this, I'm cool with that. I don't got to go like this. Because when you go like this, the only way for you to go is this. You feel me? So I already know niggas see that, and niggas can't even deny this shit, bro. Like, so whatever nigga feel like, I don't even give a fuck. Or whatever a nigga list say, I really don't give a fuck. It's just like, I recognize what's what, and I recognize what niggas doing. Like, nigga, I could start naming stats and, 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 and all type of shit, and, and, and who co-signing what, and who, who saying what about me, and who saying this and that and third about me. But y'all niggas already know who doing that, because y'all niggas blatantly be doing little weird shit. And it's like, if that's what you want, that's what you want, you mean? Now I want how to, how is it to be a real lyricist and a real artist in the drill wave era? I don't feel it. My the type of people that like me, I don't feel. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I don't feel like when niggas be like, "Yo, this is new drill rapper," I'd be like, "Who the fuck is that?" Because like the fans that's with me don't bring that nigga up. But like I still. You know me, I, I check in and tap into certain shit. Like, I, I like certain niggas that be doing drill shit. And I, I even work with a couple of them niggas. I would, but, like, it got me sense. That's, like, that's my main thing. No, in fact, though, have you ever been pressured to, like, step on a drill beat or, like... I've been more so feeling, like, pressure to step on and shake that beats. Less, less, less... Because dr that drill should be getting blackballed. <laughs> I'm saying... They already scared of us as Philly niggas as it is. So like once we start drilling too, <laughs> that's like that's like one on one. But like more so like to show niggas that you could do other shit on the it, it'd be more so to shake that shit. I ain't never felt more no pressure on no drill shit. Cause all my shit kinda got that vibe without being a drill beat. You feel me? A lot of my shit, not all of it. No effects though. Now um just give some advice to like the artists who Cause a lot, I feel like Philly got so much talent, but the fact that you know your audience and people don't even understand that simple thing as far as five. That's a real thing, bro. Wallow told me that. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, if I could explain anything to an upcoming artist, recognize your audience and stay consistent. That's the most important thing. Consistency and recognizing your audience. That's 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 something that you can't. It don't matter what a motherfucker, how much money a motherfucker. Put behind you if you don't know, recognize that then you in trouble no effects though man i want to bring a little up to date things like that um shout out to beans he just had his 50th birthday right. whole, whole city came out um you was definitely supposed to perform <laughs> right it was supposed to be something like i said it was a lot <laughs> <laughs> this nigga crazy keep going i'm here we here